Hi all, uh, here is the presentation of by far the most popular snooker drill to line up. A drill for which, uh, in which many players scored their first half century, first century, first total clearance, probably done by almost any snooker player that has practiced the game. The name of the drill lineup probably is, the reason is obvious. Why is this drill relatively easy? First of all, all turrets have pockets. There is nothing that I, there is, uh, uh, there is no red that needs to be developed. As long as I maintain the correct position of the cue ball to the next uh, object ball, I should be completely fine. Another reason becomes uh, visible when I consider the next shot, this black of the spot. Let's have a look at it in more detail. If you have seen, the path of the cue ball is like this. And depending on the place where the cue ball finishes, I can address a different thread. And here I will go for the red the center, this one. But if the cue ball went further, I could go for any of these threads over there. This is actually a bit misplayed shot. This red is slightly more tricky than the other reds I could have gone for. The reason is that uh, I didn't play the previous black uh, far enough. It should be noted that I am also not the fastest of players. I am not a professional player. I'm nowhere near the pace of Ronnie O'Sullivan, who recently scored a century within uh, about three and a half minutes. This total clearance will take about 13 minutes, so relatively slow. In this drill, I remember I also tried to focus on my fundamentals, on uh, keeping the pre-shot routine exactly the same for each shot so not only it was a potent exercise or positional shot exercise it was also an exercise on how to approach the shot to make approaching each shot consistent you can see that in the beginning of the break i first tried to take off the reds in the bottom of the table between the pink and black spot and then I will move on to the higher part of the table. The reason is that I don't want to leave an isolated red on the bottom of the table because I would need to travel for it later. Possibly slightly more difficult shot, but not much. Here we travel to the top part of the table. Uh, to the reds between blue and pink spot. It's always nice to take on this red that I'm about to take right now. The point is that uh, I release the pink spot. Right now there is no obstacle around the pink, so the positional shots of the pink to any of the reds uh, is significantly easier. You can also see that for many shots I try to keep the cue ball roughly within this, these areas that I just marked. The point is that I uh, try to stay close to the next threads. I simply try to make it simple. In snooker, it's not also important to keep the correct angle as it is in pool. It also becomes critical to stay relatively close to your work, stay with the cue ball relatively close to the next pot that we are about to pot. The reason is that the Pockets in snooker are significantly tighter and have significantly more unpleasant profile than they have in American pool. It's also the reason why we tend to have this robot-like technique where only a small part of our body is moving, which is the right uh, arm, and the rest of our body provides a stable construction for the uh, delivery of the cue. Another factor that you can see within this drill is that it's quiet. I'm not in a pool hole, it's perfectly quiet. 
On purpose, I don't play any music over here. The point is that uh, we are not in the United States, we are in Europe, in particular Poland, and uh, a lot of tournaments in Poland uh, are played uh, in quietness. Since in practice you try to recover the conditions that you can face in a tournament, uh, then I also don't play any music, I don't use any headphones whatsoever so that I am not thrown off when it comes to playing in the tournaments in quiet. So here you can see um, I am moving around the pink spot, taking the reds in the vicinity of the pink. This was a slight kick. The, it was an unclean contact between the cue ball and the pink ball. The, the cue ball with didn't have uh, anywhere near the spin that uh, it was intended to have therefore with this relatively cheap method i try to clean it right now you can also possibly part of the reason why this uh, kick happened is first of all high humidity in this room the second reason is the type of chalk i'm using it's uh, this particular chalk is a triangle chalk it's fine however it tends to leave significantly more kicks uh, uh, well it tends to leave slightly more dirt on the cue ball leading to significantly more kicks as you have seen before mm, the solution to it is that uh, often very often the players switch to other brands like Taum or Kamui uh, with the hope of having less kicks and more clean contact between the cue ball and the object balls uh, however the not nice feature is that these uh, other brands of chocks uh, cost like uh, about 30 dollars when the cheap chalk that i'm using right now is less than a dollar I'm now moving around uh, the blue spot, trying to clean the reds around it. Uh, as you have seen, you can see I didn't really clear this one. I'm gonna have to move for it at some point in this break, but again, it's not really a huge problem. Now we slowly progress uh, into the part of the drill which becomes slightly more difficult than the previous one. The point is that uh, uh, when before I had uh, the whole line of reds to play position for right now these uh, reds become more and more isolated therefore the positional shots will need to be more and more precise since I will be playing position for a single red instead of a set of them. Now it will become slightly more difficult on from this point. The position will need to be a bit more precise. The reason is that especially now that these two reds uh, that are left on the table, they have no shared position area, resulting in less margin for error. This shot was actually risky. Uh, it looked simple, but the reason is that these soft shots, uh, there are often kicks associated to them. Especially on this table, therefore possible a better choice for previous shot uh, would be to play a stun run through. Slightly 
more difficult to control, but uh, uh, there would be a higher probability of not getting a kick. Positioned the final red next to the blue. Really, so far it has been a textbook break. And also the angle on this red is uh, very nice. The point being is that this angle uh, leads me towards uh, low value colors and uh, from these low value colors it will be good, uh, significantly easier to get the position on the yellow when we start to clear the colors. So now it's a double yellow. This yellow will come after the previous red and the next yellow will be the first yellow out of sequence of colors. You need to be a bit careful every time you stretch like this. Uh, you need to be a bit careful to deliver your cue straight, not to make an easy mistake. Such mistake can be simply caused by the fact that you don't assume your usual position, but you have to stretch on the table in a slightly more uncomfortable way. Same thing again. Now we have sequence of colors. Actually, on that sequence, I can see that uh, the spots on these tables were not as precise as they should, since uh, brown, blue, pink, and black make some wiggles instead of forming a straight line. It doesn't really matter, but but uh, doesn't create a nice impression. Brown to blue is probably the most difficult and most critical shot in the sequence of colors. The point is that you really want to stay in this area of the table so that you have a relatively simple position for the pink. If you would uh, finish below on the previous shot, let's say here, then you would have to go around the angles to find position on the next pink, go to the top and bottom part of the table, resulting in a more difficult positional shot. And by having the correct angle on the brown, I have easy roll for the pink. Now a bit of concentration. It was 35 good shots before. I don't want to blow it off. So just make sure of the black. And the drill is done.